Okay. <laughs> Can you see both of my pictures? Can you see like my face and my table? Because my iPad up here is looking kind of weird. It, it tells me I haven't gone live yet, but I think I have. And if you can see me, can you hear me? Let's see the name of the video where you showed step by step how you make your templates. That stone, those your stones are so neat. I love that. Hey Angel V. Um, hey Coretta Blackman and Miss CC. Miss CC, it, it'll have the word rhinestone. It'll probably have the word rhinestone, not rhinestones. It, it might say rhinestone template or rhinestone. So if you go to my channel and you search for that, you should be able to find it. After this video is over, I can add a link to the video description if you want me to. Or maybe, I don't know if Vince is coming in, but she always is really great at finding those things. Sheila's great at finding those things. So remind me at the end of the video and I'll do that. And this is going to be a really fast video. Some of you might even have like a bling class set. Well, in like 42 minutes. So anyway, it's not going to be too long. And the Chiefs are playing today. So I got to watch the Chiefs. But Miss CC, I will look for that after the video if one of the moderators don't find it during the live. Okay. Hey, Corgi and Phyllis. Hey, Tina Clemens. Hey, Gil McGinnis. Hey, Niwan Rencher. Solar Creations. Lenora, how are you? Natalie Hatchet. Hey, Sonia. Hey, Miss Nini. Happy Sunday. Hey, Gail McGinnis. Hey, Gail Designs. I think I might have said one to hire you or said hi to one of you already. You can see I'm a little amped up. I just decided to go live at like four till, my time, four till one. And I still had to cut the outside of my template, which I haven't weeded yet. So I threw my cameras on, comb my hair, got my template going, and here we are. Hey, Miss T. Hey, Louise. Hey, Michelle. You're welcome, Miss Cece. All right. Yes, thank you so much, Gil, to remind them to hit the like and subscribe. I appreciate that. Hey, Sharon. So if you watched, I think it was our, no, it wasn't the live last Thursday, or was it? Or Tuesday, I don't know. But recently, Patrice used my trick-or-treat design. And she had added an outline to it. And it really made it look so much better. And so I spent the last few days making an outline. And I finished it today. And so I wanted to cut it out and show you what it looks like. So if you happen to have purchased this design through my Etsy store last year, then go in through Etsy, send me a message with that order number or whatever. You know how you can you can send messages and it tells me the order number. And if you did purchase this, I'll just send you the new file, which I didn't change this. This is still the same, even though I was tempted to because I've learned more since that. Or since then, I didn't change this file at all because anybody that already had this, I wanted you to be able to just use the outline and add that to it. Okay. And then I took down the old, the old design, and then I put it up as a new design with the outline. So, hey Louise, hey Denise, hey Ray, Sharon Jordan, hey Sandra. Okay, hopefully I didn't miss anyone else. If I did, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to see how well this weeds. I cut this on the Romeo and let me just change this over. I took out, I took off the weeding box. So I use the weeding box function and now I just need to see how well it cut. So, so far I see one little dot that stayed in. Boy, and I cut it close on this too. I should have given it a little more room. But it worked. It's okay. Okay, I see several block dots that stayed in. So we're going to have to work on this for just a little bit. And then somebody said they were using their mouse pad to stick it to. I don't think I have a mouse pad in here. And 
I made the mistake of using my hand and it worked beautifully, but then I couldn't get them off my hand. And so any other ideas? I tried parchment paper. I tried Teflon. I wanted something they might stick to a little bit, but I could get the back of it off because you know this new clock is super, super sticky. So, nope, that's not going to work. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to start with the other part of the template, and then I'll just deal with that in a little bit. Okay. Hopefully I haven't missed anyone. And I hope you guys are having a great Sunday. So far, so good here. All right, let's see if I can get that off my computer a little bit and more on to the template. Hey, Miss Becky. There we go. Okay, so my favorite color to put rhinestones on is almost always black. So like the shirt I have on. Um, I think they stand out really beautifully on black. I also like dark purple. I like bright pink, um, bright blue, things like that. Oh, 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 Delonda had an idea too. She said to use the little lint rollers. I'll try that. And masking tape. I could do that too. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Hey, Terry. But I don't have any black totes, and I live in this really small town. A friend of mine had given me several of these kind of, oh, I don't know, linen-looking. They're very thin, but kind of linen-looking. And so I'm going to use it on that and give it to a friend of mine's granddaughter. And so that they stand out really well. I want to use black for the outline. And then I have two colors of orange. I started with three, but then I decided the gold orange just wouldn't look that good on something really light. So here is, this is hyacinth. Let's see. Now it might look a little more red in the camera. It is a very, very bright orange, a deep orange. Almost, hmm, not really as red as a tomato, but it is dark and deep. So I thought that would look really well on here. And then I'm going to use some purple ones. So that's one option. Hey, Linda Gray. Hey, Sharon Davenport. Thank you. Hey, Nicole. Lillian Davis. Hello. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone else up there. Oh, thanks. So I can't remember if these are Topaz AB or Champagne AB, but I can check to see before I get off of here. Hey, Sandy. You just got the new flock, Gail. Okay. Okay, we can work with it because that's what we have, but it's not my favorite. Okay, so here's the other orange color. Let's see. And this is called Sun. Now this camera desaturates things. So it is, it's brighter than what this is showing. But it is truly a golden orange. And to me, I feel like Trick or Treat should be that bright orange. So I'm thinking Hyacinth, Jet Black, and then these are the Neon Purple AB. I fell in love with these on my last live. Hey, Jess's Craft Therapy. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> Nicole, if you aren't overly busy, somebody earlier was looking for a video of mine where I showed step-by-step, step, thanks to Loris, how to make a rhinestone template. And it was in my earlier days. So if you have time, would you look on my channel and search for rhinestone, just singular. It'll either be rhinestone template, something like that. If you find it, put it on. If you don't, I'll just put it on after the live. No big deal. All righty. So let's go ahead and turn this on so I can get this smoothed out. And then... What do y'all think? You think this bright orange? You think bright orange or muted orange? I think bright orange. Do you have any vetoes for bright orange? 
Oh, yes, Miss Becky, for a pumpkin, I think the sun would be gorgeous. Okay, thanks, Michelle. I'm going with bright. Oh. <laughs> bright, bright. You guys can tell I want to use bright, so thanks for appeasing me. We're going bright. Going bright. Okay. So, you guys doing anything special today? You have any football games you want to watch? This has really been a kind of a slow and lazy Sunday. We got out early this morning, which is unusual for us. And then I've been home since, gosh, 11? Usually I'm barely awake by 11 on the weekends. Hey, Don. Oh, Gail, neon orange. That would have been pretty. Do I have, I think I have neon orange. It would have been pretty. I think this will be gorgeous though too. Looking for a new Christmas tree. Oh, Michelle, you're going to watch the Broncos lose. So who are the Broncos playing, Michelle? Are you rooting for the Broncos? You're just afraid they're going to lose? Or are you rooting for the team that they're playing? Is that who the Chiefs are playing? I don't even know. Oh, my goodness, Dawn. That has gone on too long. I hope you get better soon. Oh, getting your hair done for Fling Fest. So exciting. Y'all, I have not blinged out a shirt yet for Bling Fest. I don't even know what I'm going to bling out. I don't know what design. So I tend to wear like these big loose baggy clothes because that's just what I like. And so I found a pair of pants on Amazon. And they're not baggy, so I don't like my pants real baggy. But I like to wear, oh gosh, like jackets or the flowy... I don't even know what you call them. Hey, Four Corners. Hey, Jolie. You're not late. So I bought off of Amazon kind of a, it's lacy kind of, or I don't know. It's not solid. So, you know, we have to wear all white for the dinner. So it's white and it's long and, you know, it doesn't button or anything. It's just kind of like a long, thin over shirt. So I have my white pants, my long, thin overshirt, and then I need to bling out something to wear under that. Hey, 755. Hey, Marissa. I thought about cheating. Okay, they play the Packers. I thought about cheating and buying like a sequin shirt <laughs> or something like that. And I thought, well, how good would that be to show up? That would just be wrong, right? So I need to find either a t-shirt or a tank top, camisole thing. I think it's supposed to be a little bit chilly, not real chilly. But I need to be weather ready. Hey, Ernique. Hey, DW. Hey, Coretta Blackman. And I thought I saw Richie in here. Hey, Tracy. Richie, I think, there you go. Thanks, Richie. You might be the only one that does have bling on your outfit. I've seen a lot of people talking about blinging shoes. I think, Ernique, were you blinging shoes? Or was that, I think that was Jamie. I don't think that was Ernique. Because Jamie and her cousin Karen... That's what it was. We're talking about blinging out shoes and such. And I think, Gail, are you blinging out your shoes? And a hat. I think Gail's blinging out a hat. So y'all will be fancy, fancy. I'll just be a little fancy. And then I don't know what I'm wearing to the bling fest. I assume it's pretty casual. You know, jeans and our bling t-shirts, stuff like that. So we go really dressy. Okay, so I'm not gonna use the or on this layer. I cut it out also with my outline layer because I want it to match my outline. Or actually, it's gonna be purple. That's what it's gonna be. 
Okay, Karen and Jamie are, and Gail, you are too. Hey, Daisy, welcome in. Thanks for joining. Daisy, are you new to bling or do you bling already? It's fun. It's addicting. And the crafting community is such a nice, awesome group. So glad you're here. And so, so I live in Kansas and it's so weird here. This is the time of year where it's cold in the morning, it's cold in the evening, and then sometimes it stays chilly during the day. But then we had a couple of days in the last couple of weeks that got up to 70 some degrees. So it's hard, have not very new. Awesome, well, welcome here. It's hard to dress for work for all day when you're freezing in the morning and you're hot in the afternoon. And I happen to share, so my workspace, I have an office and then the food services director has an office and that's a guy and the assistant principal has an office. So we are clustered together in one area and it has its own heat and AC unit and they're both always hot and I'm always cold. So, well, I'm not as cold as I used to be because, you know, extra weight, but I'm typically colder than they are. So we made a deal years ago and I had to break in the new assistant principal to this deal when he started four years ago. But the deal was when it's cold outside, I get to run the heat and they just have to open their windows. When it's hot outside, they get to run the air conditioner and I have to open my window to get warmed up. But even though we made that deal, they complain about the heat. So I try not to burn them out. And so another thing, like my husband, he's kind of the same way. And we had never had a dual control air conditioning vehicle, heat and air, until he got his truck I don't know, two, a year and a half ago or so. Um, actually, I think his vehicle before it did have that too. But, you know, it hasn't been around in our lives. I mean, in, in my family, we just haven't bought those, those vehicles. When we get a vehicle, we keep it till like the wheels fall off. And so I've always faced that issue with him too. So when we travel, you know, I'm taking an extra blanket, an extra hoodie, whatever, so I can stay the temperature I want to be. But the dual controls has really, really helped that. Okay, so Jesse, are you here, Chris? Anybody here that typically looks for the extra stones? <laughs> I think I see one. I'm going to put that like that, and let's see. Make it where it's big, and I, and there we go. If y'all see anything that looks weird, let me know. Now, I saw one over here. Where was it? Thanks, Yvonne. Oh, you ran deep with Jewel, yeah. Hey, Craig Barker, thanks for coming in. Hello, Carla. Okay, y'all see any weird stones? I know there's one somewhere because I glanced, oh, there it is. I glanced and I saw it. It's a little bit harder when the stones are in the red family and so is the flock. Okay. You stay on. Okay, check right tip of the top T. Yes, it is. Oh, there's two extra ones up there. Thank you, Linda. Bottom of the A. Oh, there's one in the bottom of the E. The bottom of the A. I think looks okay. Yeah, we do need eagle eye, Chris. That's right, Nicole. 
Okay, so Tracy, I added an outline to it. And so if you've already gotten this design, I need to email you the file that has the outline in it. I didn't change anything here. I just added an outline because Patrice had done that. It was gorgeous. All right, so we don't have time to clean up stones right now. So I'm just going to push those aside and deal with that afterwards. And so then for the word or, I'm going to use these neon purple. So pretty. I want to go with, you know, really traditional orange, black, and purple. Now the backs of these neon stones are white, unlike the backs of most stones. And so if that looks a little weird to you, that's why. Okay. Hopefully it is all, all good, Linda. And so, Tracy, if you've made something with it, like I was looking for something I made with it, but I think I must have made things and sent them to my great nieces, my great nieces and nephews, because I was looking for my old project, and I was just going to add an outline to it to show how if you have the old file, you can just do the outline. But I couldn't find it. So we just started over, and I have a little girl I wanted to make a bag for anyway. Okay. There, that one. Let's go ahead and deal with those stones. Okay, Sharon. I will sure get that out to you. And I think I have your email easily. Hey, Aunt Wanda. So, so far, I need to send it to Tracy and Sharon. I'll try to remember that, and then I can do it right after we get off, just in case you want to make a bag for someone. Yeah, when Patrice used the outline on hers, which she did her outline, I was like, that really takes it up a notch. All right, let me grab some transfer tape. I'm out of regular size transfer tape, so I just have to piece together the five inch strips, but it works. I should order some, but I'm being thrifty. All right, let's make sure that's wide enough. It is. And then we'll get this pressed down. And then I'm going to use the trick. Now, who told me that? Who back in the chat? It wasn't Sharon. Who told me to use masking tape? That's what I'll do. I'll either, well, I have painter's tape in here, or I can't, hi, Vesta, I can grab a piece off of, like, a lint roller and try that as well. We'll just see together how well that one works. Yes, Don, it is on my website, and I just added, I just added the new version that has the outline with it on today. And then I took the old version off so no one would accidentally get that. Hey, Kevin, welcome in. So, okay, I missed something up here. Somebody's going to make the best of something. Miss Becky's going to make the best of... Okay. Ooh. That's a big, big temperature change for you. Hey, Tammy. Welcome in. Hope your day is going well. All right, this is going to be a little bit loud. And so what I do with these little strips is I put them together. I guess I could lay it down and hope I don't knock anything out and then lay the next one down. But I just do it like this. The trick to this is when you're putting them together before you lay them down on your rhinestones is not to have any puckers. Hey, Tianda. I saw your name up there somewhere. There you are. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Sheila Stone. So anyone that's new to rhinestones, this really isn't the way you typically would do this. Typically, you would buy the right size, the correct size, of transfer tape 
but when I found this, it was so, so, so inexpensive that I just had to get it. And I didn't only get one roll, I got two rolls, so I have a lot to use up. And then what I'll be able to do is I will be able to use this same pieced together set of transfer tape on both layers of my design. That is the plan. Hey, up design. Okay. There we go. Now this is huge. It's a lot larger than I need it to be. And sometimes that can cause a little bit of an issue, but we're going to hope for the best. Or I could cut it down. But we're just going to go for it. Hey, Tracy Johnson. All right, so see how this goes. That went fine. I have, whoops. Oh, I flipped one upside down somehow. How did I get one rhinestone flipped upside down? That is weird. One rhinestone. The other thing is when you piece together your tape, they just don't quite fit together as snugly, I guess, because they're in layers. Okay, so this is the part I hate with this. Oh, this is the old block. Oh, this should come up easily. So for those of you out there that might be somewhat new to rhinestones, or maybe you just haven't been doing them for a while, a lot of us get our rhinestone flock from Heat Transfer Warehouse. Oops, go back to them. And the backing, oh, uh, uh, I'm just gonna piece those in. The backing on the flock is super, super sticky now. And so when you pull your rhinestones up, they don't always all come out. Now, this is the old flock. I don't know what I did to cause these four not to come out, but I'm just gonna place them by hand. And then I have that one that's upside down I need to fix. So let's get this where I can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna find some over here that are upside down. All right, so I have four to piece in and then one to flip over. So just a tiny little bit of rhinestone surgery. I don't think that one was in the perfect place. It's close enough. I don't think a six-year-old girl is going to care. She is just going to see bling and the words trick-or-treat and a big bag to collect more candy than anyone ever needs. All right, so where's that one that's upside down? Up in the K. Let's see. My tweezers, that hurt. Don't poke yourself with tweezers. These are really sharp tweezers. Okay. Find one that's right side down, and there we go. Okay, so I need to preheat my bag. Thanks, Sheila. And these bags are so thin, and they're just kind of linen-y, and so they're real wrinkly. So hopefully I can get those wrinkles out. Hopefully I don't just set the wrinkles in. It would probably have been better to iron this with a true iron so I could stretch it. Hey, Valerie. But sometimes what I'll do is I'll set, I think this side is, no, I'll set something on the heat press. And as it's closing down, I'll be tugging on it to try to get it to come out a little bit more flat. We're going to try that. Maryland versus the bag. 
All right, see what happens. Good enough. Play safe. Oh, that's a good idea, Gail. That is a good idea. Especially if I have the right size of pillow handy. Okay. We're going for it again. And if I need to, I can get my little easy press out and just fix the wrinkles that are left. Especially on the back side. I don't really care if there's wrinkles on the back side for now. But let me look for that pillow. The issue with the pressing pillow is the pressing pillow needs to be wider than your design, but it also has to fit inside the bag. So I'm not sure. Nope. I need more. I need more pressing pillows. That one's not going to work. But I think it's it's flat enough. It's going to be fine. Okay. So let's get all these extra stones out of the way. I need to add glow in the dark decals on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually, the glow in the dark decals. Help with safety. All right, let's just move that off. And then the outline shouldn't take too long. My plan was to be off here by two of my time, which is in like 10 minutes. Just in case anybody was taking the Blaine class. So is anybody still in here that's taking the Blaine class today? If you haven't heard of the Blaine classes, so Patrice of Craftable Things and Eve of the Baby's Booty, have rhinestone classes. And so I think today's class is an advanced class. Okay, we're gonna avoid this big wrinkle down here. And that looks good. Look, I'm not even getting a ruler out. I know that's shocking. Let's see, I thought I saw one that was on its side. Oh, I see an extra stone in that C. Oh, Sonia, thank you. I will do that on the next one. Because I'm kind of away from where the towels are. And I think this is going to work okay. Now, I've never put rhinestones on this type of fabric. Hopefully, this fabric likes rhinestones. Um, I mean, it looks like it would. So I don't see any, any problems or issues. The only issue that I see is because the bottom layer is not flat, <laughs> this is wrinkly, that maybe that'll cause a rhinestone to not stay on real well. Okay, Miss Becky, you're going to save your money for Blink Fest. I understand that totally. Today is the advanced class. Okay. All right, let's see. If they all stay down on my wrinkly bag, my wrinkly uneven bag. Okay, that looks fine. Now what I would love to do, if, if I didn't piece this together, I would set it back down on the backing and I would use my brayer to smooth it out some, but I don't have that ability right now. So, so far, so far here's the bag. Now this is, that's what the old design looked like, but it's it's going to be nicer with this outline. So now we have to find the lint roller and try to get the rest of those dots out. Now, earlier somebody said masking tape works, and so that could be an option. What I don't want to do is let it fall on my table, because if I do, it's going to be heck to get it off of my table. But, oh, 
heck to get it off my hands. So Delana said she takes a sheet off of the lint roller. Where's the end of the brush? There it is. She said she takes a sheet off of this and she uses that. And that's basically like the suggestion in the chat was use masking tape. So same concept. So I'm going to try to kind of pull this over my hand and stick it to my hand. Not stick it to my hand, but count on my hand. Let's see what happens. See if I can even get it to stick to itself. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Okay, let's try this. I don't know. I definitely don't want to stick it on the back. I'd probably never get it off. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's what happened. None came off on this. They all came off on my hand. There, that's where they are. They're all on my hand. Okay, so, oh, I do not recommend putting this down on the back of your clock, but I'm on live, so it's an emergency. It's urgent. It's urgent I get these out. What a mess. So the issue with the flock is it it cuts beautifully. At least mine does. It's just the stinking dots don't want to come out. I guess from all that extra stick. <laughs> oh, Dawn. That's better than tears. All right, let's get these up here. I have not had this many stay in that I can remember. Now, I did see Angel B. I watched another, I watched a video that I had seen before, but I was paying closer attention to it because now I have the Romeo, and she was using the Romeo. And on that video, she used a cutting mat. So she left the backing on a rhinestone flock but she used a cutting mat and I thought she said she had better luck that way and she was using a pressure of like 60 or something here's the one thing about the Romeo that I don't like the one thing that I don't like is there is not a set blade depth so what I mean is mechanically there is nothing like you set it and then you tighten it. Whereas I think it should have a set stop and that's the right blade depth. Because what you're supposed to do is set the blade depth to, that it should hang down the, the width of, not the width, but you know, a credit card, real thin credit card, the blade should hang out that far. Well, I think that's hard to achieve consistency. And so when we all talk about our pressure, I think it, it depends on how far your blade is out. And I think there should be a specific depth. Sharon, I love the Romeo, I really do. But that is one thing that I don't like. I wish they would come out with a new blade housing where the blade is always set at the same depth. I don't know. It, do you guys know of a reason why it's not set at a certain length that you have to set it yourself? Like my other cutters, it's just set. And so I think my blade is out farther than it should be. Because when I did a pressure of, like I think my pressure is 37 now. When I did a pressure of something like 40, um, it was cutting through the backing. And that's probably because my blade's out too far, not because the pressure is wrong. Okay, I'm done with my rant, sorry. <laughs> I'm done with it. 
Okay, I have all kinds of flock dots on the hands. Hopefully that won't bother anyone. Um, and I see some, some goo sticking through right there. And so that's probably a place where the stones won't lift up. Okay, let's see. Let me find my template. Now I'm just going to flip this chopping mat over. And these are the bigger chopping mats that you get off of Amazon. And lay this down. And because this block is so, so sticky, first I'm going to lay it on this Teflon sheet. Because I don't have a lot of extra space to get this in the wrong place. So from top to bottom, I think it's pretty tight. Let's see. Okay, that'll work. So Dawn, on the graph tag, do you have to set your own blade depth on that one too? Or is it just there's a certain stop where it stops? <laughs> Elevate artistry. I love it when I'm on two devices trying to watch two lives or a live at a video. One day I saw somebody comment in one live and they were like, oops, I wasn't meant for this live. And they were probably doing the same thing. Oh, that's a good idea, Tracy. Use a permanent marker. Hey, Tams. How are you? Are Is this a work day, Tams, or is this a you get to hang with family day? So anyway, that's just now coming in. Yes, I have flock dots all over my fingers, but I can't get them off. And I don't want to waste your time in trying to get them off. So I look like they have the measles, but it'll be okay. Hey, Stephanie. So also, so Demps, I don't know if you have this template, but this is the one Patrice did a while back. She remembered that I did a trick-or-treat template from a year ago, and she had used that template a year ago, and then this year she put an outline around it, and it looks so good. So I spent some time putting an outline around it, and we're going to see. I think it's going to look so much better. That third dimension. I don't know if that's the right phrase, but added detail, more stuff, more shine. Hey, Marianne. And my press wants to turn off. Now, when I make an outline, and you might see this if you buy a design with outlines. Sometimes the outline looks like it's attached to or overlaps a little bit of the other part of the design. And I try not to have mine quite overlap, but they might be butted up against each other because when you separate them, that line is just your cut line. It's not where the rhinestone is. So to try to have them just a little bit tighter, which my designs aren't extremely, extremely tight. Um, but if you get the design and you think, okay, well, that outline is like right up against the other one. Well, you're cutting them on separate layers and the stones should still fit in just fine. We are getting ready to find out. Oh, I probably want to see more of my table and me. Don, you only use it. Okay, so Don, I missed your answer. I'm sorry. But with your graph tech, is there a set stop for the blade? Like, is it foolproof? Like you just put it in and you make sure it's all the way in and that's where it's supposed to be? Or do you have to adjust your own blade depth? Okay, lots and lots of extra stones. I'm always putting way too many on it, but 
To me, they fall into place a little bit more easily when you have an abundance of stones. And then I don't know if you guys saw from yesterday. Let me look at this for a minute, make sure it looks good. Without lines, it's to me easier to see if you're missing stones. And then some of these letters were close enough together. So like between the T and the R, I couldn't do two full sets between those. Same thing down here at the bottom of the A. Okay. So, nope, it does not have a set stop. So you have to know how to adjust your blade as well. Okay. Maybe that's more industrial. I don't know. But I like... I like knowing that it's in the exact right spot without me having to use my judgment. I'm sure as I continue to work with it, I'll feel more comfortable with that. But I would love to see that. Hey, Crafting with the Londa. Start over. <laughs> Delanda, Delanda, how is your day? I was talking about you earlier and your um, trick to use the lint roller piece, and I got it all over my hands instead. All right, that looks good. Let me just brush some of these off to the side. Since we're trying to get off here pretty soon, <laughs> Start over D. You put it in and just... Okay, so Don, you check the depth by putting your finger over it. And I guess since it's only the depth of the credit card, you can just kind of... You probably have a feel for that. Because I saw earlier you said you've been doing it for five years, so... You probably have a good feel for it. Okay, so this is the new clock. This is what I was talking about, that the stones get stuck in it because there's so much excessive glue. See all those? And so the rhinestone world says don't do this. I used to. I don't know how they're getting their stones out because now I think they're clock, from what I understand, was it Sharon Davenport or who was it? Miss Becky? Somebody got some of their blocks and now it has the same ultra stickiness to it. But you wear your transfer tape out faster if you do what I just did. And they still didn't all come up. Hey, hey Gloria. Everything with me is good. Getting ready to watch the Chiefs game in a little bit. Oh, thanks, Delanda. I appreciate that. That is so sweet of you. I hope it's teaching us something like how to deal with this sticky flock. Or, I don't know. We need help. Okay, so Sharon, you did. They never mentioned it was new. I don't think anybody's really mentioning it's a new formula except for all of us crafters <laughs> who are hating it. But again, it is what it is. And so if we're going to do rhinestones, we have to, I guess we have to get used to it. So I literally, I mean, I am pushing in really hard on those and they don't want to come up. So, hi, maybe another trick for that would be, before you put rhinestones in, maybe do what Delana had talked about with the lint roller. Okay, maybe take a piece of that and put it all over your template to get all that extra sticky up. I don't know. Okay, so let's piece these in and... Because of the issues that we're having, doing rhinestone shirts and bags takes longer than it used to. Okay, so I have two missing from the K. I think I'm just going to leave them in the flock for now and find other ones to put in their place. 
that's probably going to be a whole lot faster and less bad words that I might say to get this done. Okay, my K is done. I'm probably off camera now. I'm sorry. The T, so it's this T. That's done. Looks like I have one missing in this A. Now my hand is stuck to it. Okay, get over where you belong. You're too close to your neighbor. Okay, one in the E. And one in the other T. And I think that might be it. Let's hope. So the first T, which is over here. Okay. I'll deal with my measles situation later. Get that bag back over here. Oh, okay, Delonda. So I've had people over time say that I use too much tape. But... I, I like to use a lot of tape. <laughs> I'm the tape queen. And it has helped my tumblers be better. So when I first started doing sublimation tumblers, I was really frustrated because it seemed like I was wrapping really tight. And even when I was using shrink wrap and I'd get the crinkly things at the top or the bottom because my paper was too long or something and thank goodness I've gotten a little better over the time. All right so let's lay this down try to get in the right place the first time. I don't have it quite all the way down because I'm trying to adjust it as I go. I feel like I didn't Put that stone quite in the right place. That looks good. Ooh. Oh no. I think this fabric might shrink or something. Let's see. And you know how with t-shirts you can kind of stretch it? Well, I can kind of stretch it out. This is not great fabric to work with. With rhinestones. Because in the design, they line up fine. I might have to cut some of these apart. This is like the worst, <laughs> the worst light ever. And you need to shut up back here. I'm getting frustrated. Baby powder cornstarch on the tip. I, you know, oh, so that's a good idea. Take off the excess. I thought about something like that, Cheryl, but then I don't want anything between the glue and the shirt or whatever I'm putting it on. But that's a good idea to try to get the excess off with something like that. Okay. At this point, it is what it is. But just realize that when you're trying to put these on something that's not stretchy and if you have any shrinkage from the heat it's tougher okay the bottom looks fine i'm thinking about just doing the bottom and then dealing with that that's what i'm going to do so i'm not going to have this part under my heat press because otherwise i might be ready to throw it out the window Okay. Hey, Karen D. So, Don, you go back to the doctor tomorrow. I hope they can find something else for you to help you feel better because what has it been? Five weeks or how many weeks has it been? Four weeks? Five weeks? It's been a long time.
Okay, so there we go. All right, so here is the first word done. And I like the addition of the outline. Again, I prefer my rhinestones on black material, but I think the black around it helps make it where you set it apart. And since I didn't have a black tote, it's just what I had to use. Okay, so before I put this down, I'm gonna try to stretch this out so that maybe it'll go down correctly. Okay, so it's been about five weeks. Okay. I love this neon purple. Love, love, love it. It's neon purple AB. I'll show it to you a little bit closer here in a minute. I used it on something that I did recently on a live. I don't remember what it was, but whatever it was, that's when I fell in love with it. Okay, my stones are kind of sideways and such, so they're wanting to shift for me putting them down and then picking them up, putting them down. Okay, so this looks pretty good so far through the eye. Let's pull the C over. I'm having stones. I don't know where they're coming from. It's a hot mess line, as Patrice would say. Oh, my goodness. Y'all proud of me for keeping my mouth nice? And not getting too angry? Because I'm feeling pretty angry. I'm feeling it. Not face red yet. So when you're doing t-shirts, again, you can stretch them to compensate for things like shrinkage. This material, no, you can't. And so for that reason, I will not be using it again. Or at least not on a layered design. It'd be perfectly fine on a non-layered design. But I don't want to use it on a layered design again. Not going to do it. And I have a few stones missing. I'm going to add those in. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> Thanks, Tionda. Uh, yeah, so Linda was on a live. And she was trying to get this gosh darn tufting machine thingy to work and Linda did you get it to work after I got off of there did it did you get it to work last night and she has the most beautiful temperament she just kind of goes with it and she still smiles and she's so cute and sweet her daughter told her she needed to have the rug done by the time she got home in two hours. She was in the chat. <laughs> uh. All right. After that, I think I have two stones to put on. I'll press that and then we're done. Done, done, done. Oh, that's right. Linda, I was still there when you did that. Okay. It's really, really pretty. I don't have it lined up very well, but it is really cute. So, let me see. I'm going to hand place a couple of stones, but since I have to take it over to the press after I hand put them on here, I'm still going to put some transfer tape over them to hold them in place while I move it. Pressing pillow. So, Tionda, the issue with this fabric is it has no stretch to it, and it's a very thin, kind of a linen weave fabric, and so I think it shrunk when I was pressing it the first couple times or something. 
and it doesn't have the stretch to it like you know when you're doing shirts and you're doing layers you have to kind of manipulate them sometime to get the layers to line up fine i think that's what's going on i don't think it's it, it's not a pressure issue like these stones came off before i pressed it i think i don't know i could easily be wrong oh thanks linda yeah so the the boots on my shirt eve loves well at least she used to love ugg boots i think now she's doing like cowboy boots and stuff and so get on my tiptoes so i made this little uh, boot design all right it is done 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 so i remember i need to send the outline to sharon davenport and to tracy not tracy johnson um passionately intrigued arts tracy is there anyone else that got it a year ago and they don't have the outline yet? And there I get a low battery notice. So here it is, trick or treat. Hopefully the little girl that's gonna use this to get a, too much candy that she doesn't need will love it. I think she will, it's sparkly. But also I said something about the purple. That is the neon purple AB. And to me it is a, just a nice, nice purple with a slight AB coating. So, you know, sometimes the AB brings in all these other colors and it does not, on this one, the AB coating on these neon purple AB stones, the neon or the um, AB coating doesn't distract from the color at all. So there's the bag. It is in my Etsy store. The design is, You'll see when it's on your screen, it lines up. I just didn't do a good job of lining it up today. So that's over and I'm happy because it was frustrating. It does, it's not lined up real well, but she won't care. All right, so thank you guys. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Hey, Tampa Barbecue Queens, A to Z Crafty Shop. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Tiana. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for coming in here. Oh, Tiana, so your Guild and Soft Style shrinks when you're doing layers. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Hey, Jennifer, again, I just kind of decided like 19 minutes before I went live that I was going live. And so I appreciate you guys coming on. I hope you have a great Sunday. Chiefs are getting ready to start in an hour. Thanks, Kevin. And so I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. I hope any of you that are going to Bling Fest have safe travels. Anyone else traveling have safe travels. If you have somebody out there you haven't heard from for a while, you're concerned about, just let them know you're thinking about them. There's a lot going on right now. And I think as we go into winter, there's so much more. Some people have um, seasonal depression, all that. So just love on your people. All right. All right. Love y'all. Until next time.